Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this November 6th, 2013 edition. Tonight, a woman is shot to death when cops were too busy to respond. Then, the federal government carelessly disposes of radioactive waste over the objections of California residents and local government. And yet another GMO labeling initiative succumbs to big corporate money. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, General blames Night Stalker for military purge. Now, who is the Night Stalker? It's Valerie Jarrett, a top Obama advisor. Jarrett, a Chicago lawyer with far-left roots, is one of Obama's closest advisors and has been throughout his career, well before his presidential campaign and Oval Office occupancy. Now, if you want a more thorough breakdown of the 200-plus military personnel who have been purged under Obama, we will go to this clip from today from the Alex Jones Radio Show. And you've got well over 200. World Net Daily says 200. It's, it's well over 200. Top military brass being purged. And the big issue is, they, in most cases, they won't say why. And then they give them orders uh, under national security to not say why. And then I talk to high-level brass, and they say, no, it's the litmus test. Will you do gun confiscation during a collapse? And they're pre-deploying the troops. They're training them for unprecedented riot control. They're training them the Tea Party's their enemy. That's in Forbes and AP. I mean, it's all there is my point. It, it dizzies my mind to try to think of all the public intel. I mean, the, the, it, it is more than 100% documented. And you say, well, how can it be more than 100%? There's so many angles to it, so many different plans within plans they've got. There's like 500, 600% proof because there's different, different battle plans and different variants and different stratas and different competing globalist groups and different uh, operations. It'd be like if a coach said, I'm trying to get you outside one-dimensional thinking or two-dimensional thinking, folks. It'd be like if a coach said, yeah, we've got one play in the playbook. That's one dimensional. They got a whole playbook of stuff. And we've got all their different plans. People say, well, that's just plans. Yeah, these are unprecedented plans. And the enemy isn't the Russians. It isn't the Chinese communist. It isn't. No, it's the American people, folks. Their own battle plans, their own main mission statements in Stars and Stripes and Army Times and everywhere is that the american people are the enemy and now there is an unprecedented in 236 years of u.s history gigantor purge of any one who is not seen as a total communist and i recognize this is heavy news for those in the military you may want to speak out but you also recognize you could be caught up in the current purge so do what you think is best for you in the, this current situation we'll move on Democrat win in Virginia signals new attack on Second Amendment. Democrat Terry McCullough's win for governor of Virginia was bolstered big time by the anti-Second Amendment crowd, led by billionaire nanny Mike Bloomberg and his independent U.S. PAC. And you can see the tweet there from Miss Gabby Giffords uh, of Arizona. It says, congrats at Mike McCullough. Mark, Mark is her husband. Mark and I look forward to working with you to prevent gun violence. Now, if there's anybody who deserves a seat at the table when debating gun violence, it's Miss Gifford. She is definitely a victim of gun violence herself. But it concerns me that uh, she's willing to take the Obama approach, that all-encompassing Dianne Feinstein approach, because you remember how Obama hid behind the, uh, the gun grab. He said, well, he didn't so much as speak out against guns per se. He did say he didn't want you to have things like AK-47s. But he said, no, I'll just go with whatever Dianne Feinstein comes up with. And Dianne Feinstein, as you recall, wanted to ban things such as pump-action shotguns and many other things that she said just should not be on the streets at all. So definitely be aware of the people, uh, including her husband, uh, Mark, who uh, straw purchased a firearm, even though it's, he says it should be illegal. He straw purchased one or attempted to straw purchase one and then give it to the local police department, if you believe that story or not. Regardless, he still did it. Cops too busy to respond to woman shot to death by boyfriend. Barbara McGregor sued the Utica Police Department and Officer Shanley in federal court on behalf of her late daughter, Kylie. 
The descendant had made numerous complaints over the previous 12 months, both to the Utica police and the state troopers, including informing them of a specific threat by Anderson to kill her. Anderson is her uh, ex-boyfriend. In addition, Kylie had sought an order of protection that would have had Anderson off the streets, but was rebuffed because it was late in the day and the advocate was, quote, too busy. Now, this is just what we see more and more of, and definitely my, condol my condolences go out to this family, because we see the situations like, I believe it was in Detroit, a woman died as she called 911 multiple times and the police uh, dispatcher didn't think it was too serious and pretty much didn't dispatch anybody to the location until it was too late. And we see a similar situation with this. So to all the gun grabbers and people who say that, you know, if, if something happens, the police will come and rescue me. Just keep in mind situations like this. As well-intentioned as these police may have been, maybe just said, you know, it's a, it's a situation, it'll burn itself out, there's nothing too much to see here. Even if they were very well-intentioned, they did not stop this situation from happening. It's not just like this uh, situations, Sandy Hook, Aurora, Columbine, just name them on and on and on. As well-intentioned as those police may have been, they weren't there to stop the massacres from happening. So definitely do what you need to do to protect yourselves and your family and don't rely on the police for your safety. Top scientists, another Fukushima quake means U.S. evacuation. Bye-bye, Japan. I have seen a paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. So if you thought Fukushima was over and done with, you thought, oh, well, that was, that was back then. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Yes, you do have to worry about this continually because, like the scientist said, if you live on the west coast of the United States, not in Japan, if you live on the west coast of the U.S., this could affect you in the very near future, not to mention the giant barge of trash coming here from Japan as well. And if you need any more proof that we are currently living in a police state, families threatened with police monitoring over transgender complaints. Now, these are a few students who said, hey, we don't want the boys in the girls' bathroom. And some bad things happened, and now they're saying that the girls need to be under police monitoring. I know that he doesn't have the same parts as me, which I just, I do not think that's right, that he could go into the same bathroom as me. When the school told me there's no rights, I was like, there has to be rights for these girls. This Colorado high school decided to allow a boy who has gender identity disorders, and, and we recognize that, it allowed him to start using the girls' bathrooms, the girls' locker rooms. And our final story for the night, GMO labeling initiative 522 has failed, proving once again that corporate money can buy food secrecy. As of this writing, Washington State I-522 looks to have narrowly failed at the ballot box. The article goes on to say the failure of 522 also shows that democracy itself doesn't work when a tidal wave of corporate money is allowed to influence election outcomes. And you recall the situation in California with, I believe it was Prop 37. It failed there in California as well. So if you live in a state that has the opportunity to label GMOs, I definitely encourage you to take it. Now we'll end tonight with this. InfoWars announces resist TSA and NSA tyranny 10K film contest. As you can see there, you have a cash prize of $10,000, a very great way to start off your year, your new year. You need to have all your submissions in by January 7th, and you have up to seven minutes in your video, and you can see all the full contest rules on InfoWars.com. Please follow the rules, have your stuff in by the deadline with the proper time limit, uh, no profanity, no nudity, don't show us the butt shot. I know it's a good, NS, uh, a good TSA joke, but don't show your butt. And uh, just follow the rules, make sure you have good stuff in there, and we'll take a look at it and try to get that out, uh, get the submissions and all the things reviewed as early as possible. But in the meantime, if you like this broadcast and you want to see it continue, go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Rants, Special Reports, and so much more right there on prisonplanet.tv. Now stay tuned because after this break, we'll have more special reports. And also David Knight talks to Telly Blackwood. You guys may remember him from the Paul Revere contest, George Washington's Revenge. So stay tuned for that.
We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. On tonight's edition of Tyranny Watch, we look at the future of Obamacare. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, let's keep talking about the healthcare.gov site, but let's dig a little deeper and go into Obamacare itself. It's going to fundamentally change the way medicine is done in the United States. And even though the healthcare.gov site is providing quite the distraction at the moment, the truth is that it's going to change the way doctors have relationships with their patients, the way we have privacy in the United States, and a plethora of other things. Let's jump first to the veterans. They're already the guinea pigs for the government. Veterans already have rationed health care. They wait hours in waiting rooms to have basic care, basic things that they need. And it's very real. You can ask any one of them who use the VA for health care. Besides waiting months for certain procedures, there's an incredible intrusion of privacy. Earlier this year, we reported on forced medication on our vets, required wellness checks, and gun confiscation. Doctors in the VA are getting $3,000 a head for each veteran that gives up their guns willingly or unwillingly. A panel will now decide your health care. Not only will you lose the possibility of choosing your doctor, but you could lose the possibility of having a procedure you might need or even live at all. That's why they're calling them death panels. Doctors are quitting because the administration is threatening those who refuse to take Obamacare health care insurance. In fact, 40% of our doctors are talking retirement because it's not worth it. Then there's enforcement on doctors. Kathleen Murphy, a Democrat who's running for the House, wants to make it a legal requirement for doctors to take patients who have Obamacare and Medicaid and Medicare. And for the people, there's enforcement by the IRS. So be ready to have all of your personal information all over the government websites. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Recently, U.S. Representatives Justin Amash and Dennis Kucinich rallied together to end NSA surveillance. We gather this afternoon before our nation's capital to call for an end to the spying and an end to the lying. Twelve years ago, America's leaders made a fateful choice to attack Iraq, a nation which did not have anything to do with 9-11. We wreaked vengeance against innocent bystanders over a million innocent Iraqis dead, thousands of our troops dead, tens of thousands of our soldiers injured, trillions of dollars added to national debt. The never-ending so-called war on terror is a war of errors and misdeeds, which produced the Patriot Act, a bill I voted against because I read it. The state has become like a leviathan 
unaccountable to anyone, slaying dragons abroad while crushing individual rights and freedoms are at home. We had the President of the United States fighting against the amendment. It was the first time during his administration, the first time during his administration that he came out in opposition to an amendment. They actually released a statement from the White House. We had the intelligence community against it. We had Republican leadership against it. We had Democratic leadership against it. And despite all those obstacles, we came very close to passing the Amash Conyers Amendment. Now stay tuned because right after this break, David Knight will be talking to independent filmmaker Telly Blackwood, so you don't want to miss that. But first, if you back ordered your nascent iodine or you just want to get some, we have it right now in stock. The people who have it back ordered will obviously get first dibs, but you can buy it individual, you can buy it in bulk, you can buy it all right there at the InfoWars shop. So stay tuned for Telly Blackwood. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Well, you may remember Telly Blackwood from Operation Paul Revere. He had by far and away the most viewed entry, George Washington's Revenge. Well, he's joining us with a story from California about some toxic waste that the feds are putting in against the wishes of state and local officials. Welcome, Telly. It's good to see you again. How are you doing, David? Doing good. Now, this brings up some interesting issues and conflict between the state and local government and the federal government. They're trying to dump this stuff, and the, both the state of California as well as the local city are not very happy about this. And you've got an update for us as to what's actually happened, but let's take a look first at this piece that you sent us where you went around and talked to residents in the area to see if they were even aware of this problem. This is Telly Blackwood with a special report coming from North Highlands, California. Right behind me, these mounds of dirt is radioactive material that's going to be buried here on base. How would you feel if I told you that McClellan Air Force Base is planning to bury nuclear toxic waste in a landfill right in your own backyard? I wasn't aware. I wish they would have told, uh, you know, us could affect us and our kids and our businesses. We have great water. I mean, I personally take it home and bottle, you know, bottle and take it home. Nobody wants anything that can poison our groundwater. Because like a lot of a lot of our real Linda customers, they also have um, wells. My my father 
passed away from lung cancer. You know, and this was a healthy man, a former soldier, used to run marathons, box. I mean, up and up until he he passed. I mean, this is a guy that still walked or jogged five miles a day, and all, all of a sudden got lung cancer without smoking a day in his life. Well, they, they say they say it's safer to actually keep it here and saves hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money to actually keep it here and not move it. Taxpayers' money saving it. It's good they take it from somewhere else. You know, they they tax you for this and tax you for that. Now that it's a business park, you know, it's they're, they're trying to do stuff with it, make it usable for the community, but you know, without informing the community of the hazards. We have building 335 right here and it tells you all the great things about it, you know. Fiber ready, building signage opportunity, ample parking. And now this right here would be the neighbor if you were to inhabit building 335. You can't even step into without some sort of protective device over your face. This huge amount of dirt behind me, radioactive, and it's going right in the ground near all these creeks and all the water. Well, that was pretty interesting. People in general don't seem to know too much about this. When they found out about it, they were not very happy. Tell us what's happened since this was, uh, since you got this footage of these people. Well, when I first found out about it, I found out about it through the Sacramento Bee had a really small article in there. I mean, Miley Cyrus and her twerking articles had a much bigger space in the paper. Oh, yes. Yeah. Small space of, hey, we're going to put nuclear waste in the ground on the already toxic waste of Air Force Base already. And <clears throat> since we started bringing attention to local businesses and residents of the area. Um, a lot of people were you know, raising quite a concern. And as soon as we started trying to get interviews and you know, trying to further along some investigation into it, they went ahead and full swing buried all of it. I mean, we had pictures and video before, these huge amounts of- Right. Yeah, we saw that. And they've just buried it now. It's, it's, it's under the ground, so no, nobody sees it, so it's not a problem, right? Oh, no, exactly. It's, it's all gone. I mean, yeah. it's, they, they, they went full force and they got to put down the ground real fast. Well, I, I guess I'm surprised because there were California state laws against that. Uh, the, there were some people in Sacramento that were not happy about that. And yet there wasn't, I guess they didn't sue them. So they just went ahead and did it before any legal action was taken. Is that what you can figure out happened there? That's what it seems, and um, they were set to have it buried and ready because they, they want to sell the property off by um, January or February of next year, and it seems they got done a little early for some reason. Well, you know, that, that brings up an interesting issue because when we look to the federal government to take care of the environment, many of us have felt concerned about the just unquestioning trust that so many people put in the federal government to take care of the environment. When in reality, the federal government is distant from the people. It's really the people who live there, as we just saw in this case. It was the people at, in Sacramento or even the people in California who really cared about this. The people who were the federal representatives really didn't seem to care about this. All they cared about was their budget. They were saying they were going to save a little bit of money by burying it there rather than moving it to some toxic waste site somewhere else, right? Well, none of them live near this area, so right. why should they be concerned? I told him, I said, well, if it's that harmless, then won't you bury it in your own backyard? That's right. I think it's a case of people needing to understand that if they really want to get something done important, you don't send it to the federal government to get it done. I mean, it's that way in so many different issues of life, certainly with the environment. The people who are going to care the most about it are the people that live there in that area. And yet, the prevailing mood in America is that if something is important, it needs to be done by the federal government. They are so backlogged, even if there wasn't the corruption and incompetence that we see in Washington, just the sheer fact that trying to get one group to do everything in the world for everybody, they couldn't get it done. But as in this case, we say they, they really simply don't care. And we've seen that in communist China. We've seen how the government there really doesn't care about the environment at all. One of the worst polluters on the planet is the Chinese government. And it's really scary because when we were there um, taking some footage of the base, so we happened to film several areas where the creek went right alongside those big radioactive dirt piles. Mm -hmm. And those creeks go through many communities in this area, including um, Del Paso Heights, rural and uh, North Highlands, uh, all the way down to um, downtown Sacramento. I mean, it's... And you've got homeowners in the area and business owners who have dug wells 
They have good water. They've, uh, they don't have the city putting fluorine, chlorine in it. And now their water might possibly get contaminated with this. You've had uh, some experiences in the past. You grew up in that area. You talked to someone there who also grew up in that area and talked about the pollution that you'd seen as children from the Air Force Base, right? Yeah. You know, there's, there's several friends of mine throughout the years right behind base. There's the creek alongside Old Roosevelt Road where green foam would always form within the currents. And we go down there and put the foam in the cups and play with it. And, you know, how my parents always laughed and said it was someone put pistachio pudding in the water. Wow. But that's not what it was. <laughs> Well, hopefully this can get some more attention. It's never too late to clean this up. I mean, it, they, they've buried it, but it, it's, it's still just recently been buried. There are still things that they can do. They still clean up toxic waste sites, so maybe this will help with that a little bit. Let's talk about something a little bit different now. You've, this is a serious report, and you've got a serious documentary that's coming up. We first met you, of course, through the uh, Paul Revere contest, George Washington's Revenge, and you got like a half a million views on that. It was amazing. And then, of course, what was equally amazing was the fact that Google took down your channel, which had been up for quite some time, Off the Hook TV. You eventually got that restored, right? Oh, yeah, Off the Hook Television was restored, and surprisingly, the um, George Washington's Revenge video had over 800,000 views. Over 800,000, wow. Wow, it just kept going up. Well, you know, Telly, I don't know if you caught it, but Alex has, has put out another contest, and this one is really right up your alley. This is a uh, parody contest, one to seven minutes, uh, parody of the TSA or the NSA, and you really got under Michael Moore's skin. He was very, very upset about your video, so you could probably do a great job of getting under the skin of the TSA and the NSA if you wanted to throw your hat in the ring for this one. Oh, well, I already started writing, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, we're already getting that one started and lined up for um, this following you know, upcoming week. There you so. go. That That's great. That's great. And if people want to help with your serious work, you've got an Indiegogo campaign on um, what was the subject? It was a prescription for murder. It's about uh, drugs and the FDA, or tell us just a little bit about that. Um, prescription for murder is a documentary to our, um, me and my um, video partner here are going to build a virtual murder case, mass murder case against mm. the FDA for... Um, withholding a real cancer cure that was found in the 70s. Wow. And so we're going to actually go and build a virtual murder case. That's and great. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. You've had some very creative ideas. Thanks for letting us know about what's going on in California. I'm sure people are going to be interested in that. And we're anxious to see both Prescription for Murder and see what you turn in on this uh, parody contest. Oh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, if you thought the uh, first one was something, wait till you see this one. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Telly. Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. Well, I can't wait to see what he comes up with. Remember, that deadline is January 7th, 2014. The cash prize is $10,000. Can't wait to see what he comes up with. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Well, within the last week, there have been two major drills conducted by the military in U.S. cities with the cooperation and participation of the police. Now, this is something we should all be concerned about. The Founding Fathers are somebody that we look up to because they're the only revolutionary leaders that did not become tyrants themselves. They understood human nature and the depravity of human nature. And they not only defeated that in others, they resisted it in themselves, and they came up with safeguards and warnings for us as to how this would happen. And one of the things that they warned us about was a standing military as well as a central bank. A standing military will eventually, and has throughout history, become a tool of oppression. It has, been, it has happened in our country in the past, where the military has been used to oppress people. And that's why we have the Capacity Comitatus Act. That was to counteract American suppression 
in the U.S. by the American military. Well, let's take a look at some of these recent drills. Uh, on January the 28th in Houston, we have a clip. Let's show that clip. Hey, helicopters and the sound of gunfire created a lot of concern this afternoon in one Houston neighborhood. This happened in southeast Houston around the old Carnegie Vanguard High School. When you see this, you think the worst. He told me, don't come home because it sounded like we're in a war zone. Guns shooting and helicopters flying around over the house. And an Army major who was out here wouldn't tell us exactly what kind of training they were doing. HPD was aware of what was going on, but the fire department apparently wasn't. Well, this is the military assault on a school. This is done with helicopters, with guns firing, with troops on the ground. The residents thought a war was breaking out. They didn't know what to think. They were warning family members not to come by. Now, the fire department didn't know about that. Ambulances were called and dispatched. The police knew about it, but neither the police nor the military warned any of the people, any of the citizens there in Houston. Now, that's not only, that's not only something that is not uh, competent, but it is also just contempt for the citizens. Let's take a look at this next clip here. This is uh, Miami, four days earlier, January the 24th, 2013. Still, if you've seen one of these drills, it really is like a scene out of one of those action movies, choppers stalking the sky of downtown Miami. Again, let me tell you what all of this is that we know of. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. As someone shot some video of some of these choppers, military-style choppers, flying over 395 in downtown. machine gun firing uh, hit the deck. Well, you heard the guy, he says, hey, it's like a movie. I guess it's supposed to be fun. A lot of people didn't think it was fun. A lot of people were very frightened by that because, again, they don't bother to tell people. But, again, what's concerning about that is notice that he says that they're training with the police. Uh, it's something that we see happening over and over again. Here's another one in Minneapolis, August 28th, 2012. If you see military helicopters flying low over Minneapolis, do not be alarmed. They are training in an urban environment. The U.S. Special Operations Command will be conducting these exercises until the beginning of September. Yep, that's the view outside my window. That's right. You hear her say, don't be alarmed. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just the American military preparing to attack U.S. cities. Of course, nothing the government uh, does, ever does is bizarre or to be questioned, just like we are never to question the TSA. And if we do, we're the ones who are bizarre. Here's another one. St. Louis, July 3rd, 2012. People who live and work in this neighborhood say they think the training here is a good idea. I think it's the same way when you go out to other countries, when you go out of town, they don't have police officers, they have troops. And I think it kind of scares a lot of people. Like cut down on crime? Crime, yeah, cut down on a whole lot of crime because they don't know if they're military or they're police. I think it's fantastic because this might slow down some of the crime rate. You know, the crime rate might go down. You know, that's what I think of. Well, now here, notice that the media takes a little bit different tact. It's not, don't worry, or uh, it's fun, it's like a movie. Here they have two people that say, well, we think it'd be great, because it'd be a great way to scare people and get crime down. Well, no, actually, the standing military is a crime. And using the army for police functions is a crime. It doesn't stop crime, it makes the government create the crime. No one who has a different view was presented in this article. And here's another one, Chicago, April 17, 2012. A pretty scary scene along the Chicago River turns out to be a military training exercise. Well, notice some of the things that they said. Although you're seeing the same things here as you did in other cities, people are talking about how reckless the behavior was. Uh, one of the videos that someone shot, he says, look at this, it's night, and these guys are zigzagging and weaving through skyscrapers at a very low altitude with no lights. Uh, something of reckless endangerment, but the thing that we're really concerned about, again, is the police and the military joining together. Take a look at this clip from uh, Los Angeles in January the 26th, 2012. Special Military Operation Forces, in conjunction with the LAPD, conducting some military maneuvers that had many people wondering what is going on. When a Black Hawk helicopter and four OH-6s, or Little Birds, flew over the city. Duran says the military picks environments based on what they might be facing in the near future. If it's a mountainous terrain, then they go to the mountains. If it's a desert terrain, they use the desert. Also, what we saw here tonight uh, in downtown Los Angeles has been seen in Miami and in Boston. Now, do you notice what he said? 
He said, if it's a mountainous terrain, they go to the mountains. If it's desert, they go to the desert. If it's the coast, they go to the coast. Why are they going to American cities? Oh, do you have that? Do you have cities like that in Afghanistan or Iraq? Are they planning to invade Iran? But if they're planning to invade Iran, why are they coordinating with American police? Do they think that the Iranian police are going to coordinate with them on an attack and an invasion of Iran? No. But the U.S. If the U.S. military attacks American cities, they will get the cooperation of the police, or at least some of them. Now, all these things have happened within the last year. All of these reports we just showed you in all these cities, major military drills involving the police and the military working together to take over American cities, training, as the man just pointed out, for the scenario that they're expecting to execute. But uh, we, this has been going on for a long time. It's just accelerating. Let's take a look at this clip where we sent a team to Chicago. Uh, they saw there a National Guard training with local police and the Polish military. Now, in just a few seconds, you're going to see some Boy Scouts in rubber jumpsuits. That's right, they're pulling the Boy Scouts in on us. The Boy Scouts are being trained to be victims. And in just a few minutes, the Polish military is going to come in in full combat gear. Yeah, right. Big exercise. Warm troops will come Probably, in. Probably, you know, 60 Boy Scouts down there with their Scout Masters and whoever else wanted to come along. Notice they have them lying face down in the anthrax powder. It's a very real life situation. <laughs> Notice that they're Everyone lying face down. Everyone lie down in the anthrax powder. And we're going to move you. Hostages, you are expendable. Please put your face directly in the powder. All right. Yeah, all of a sudden the... the uh, Polish BOA is participating in this exercise, which they didn't mention at all before that. It was just they're here to observe, they're here to observe. Hey, it's BOA. Bureau of uh, Operational Anti-Terrorism is what I think it's doing. So I don't know, this was a hard one to swallow, watching, watching these guys train. Now in Police State 4, the rise of FEMA that we produced in 2010, we have guardsmen training to find weapons caches in Arcadia, Iowa. And we have an interview with a lieutenant colonel with the National Guard there. Held back now, it says in this article, going door to door asking if they could search homes looking for weapons. And they practice raiding the local gun shop. And this is for domestic operations. Lieutenant Colonel, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You bet. Uh, I saw this uh, article out of the Daily Times Herald in Carroll, Iowa. H have you seen that? I sure have. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's telling us about an urban warfare drill to be held in several towns. Can, can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, it's actually a, a planned training event uh, to provide uh, our soldiers with greater proficiency at what we call cordon and search, uh, which is a mission that, um, um, just for a little background, we've deployed nearly 13,000 members of the Iowa National Guard in the global war on terror. And the vast majority of those have been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one of the missions that they perform in Iraq and Afghanistan on multiple occasions is cordon and search, where basically you are trying to, to get to an area, uh, cordon it off to make sure everything's safe, and then actually search for caches of weapons or other kinds of contraband which could harm um, American forces and other Like forces. Fallujah, what we saw in Correct. Fallujah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Exactly. So because of where we're located in Iowa, there are no active duty bases in Iowa. So we kind of have to create our own urban training environments. Uh, so the, the plan on this particular training event was to actually use a small town of about 450 people. Uh, the, the town has actually kind of adopted uh, the, the unit, which is called Company A, 1st Battalion, 168th Infantry. And uh, they, were, they were more than willing to participate in the exercise. Well, we showed you Boy Scouts being trained to be victims. They're also training them to be aggressors. In a uh, New York Times article in 2009, it says, Scouts to train to fight terrorists and more.
oh, what would that more be? And in this article, it says um, their, their uh, person who is helping them is A.J. Lowenthal, a sheriff's deputy. He says this is about being a true-blooded American guy and girl. Uh, now, they also had them uh, not only uh, uh, be aggressive with SWAT team raids, they also conducted a marijuana raid. And at one point, the guy says, uh, put him on his face and put a knee in his back. I guarantee he'll shut up. Well, that's the kind of training they're giving the Boy Scouts, not helping little ladies cross the street anymore. Just uh, put them on their face and put a knee in their back to make them shut up. Well, we got another clip here from uh, Police State 2000. Now, in this one, Alex interviews a police chief from San Antonio. He had to kick out Delta Force for trying to bribe city officials in order to conduct uh, training exercises there. As far as we know, this is the first time that local uh, law enforcement, local police leadership uh, has actively stood up against uh, Bill Clinton's new military. What were your major reservations in asking the mayor to tell them that, that, that y'all didn't want them to train here and to cease training here? Well, a lot of things happened. First of all, the organization came into the city and never really approached the city as a whole. We've gotten together with the mayor and said we need to speak to all these different departments uh, and request some assistance. Um, various groups and individuals came into the city and approached different people at different levels. The police department was contacted, the city manager's office was contacted about using city facilities, various business owners were contacted through the economic development department, uh, the fire department was contacted by different individuals. So there was never any coordinated uh, approach uh, to the city of San Antonio. Uh, when we found out that we had some reservations, but we were willing at least to listen. But then we start finding out that discussions were happening at other different levels, and there was no, no communication, no coordination between that. Well, then when we said no, then some elected officials were contacted to bring pressure to bear. Uh, and then uh, offers were made to give money, cash money, to elected officials' charities if they could get us to change our minds. I mean, uh, you know, as one of my deputy chiefs said, in some circles that's called bribery. Well, we have a long history of the military and the police working together in this country, training for martial law. And Alex has pointed that out for a long time in his documentaries and on the air. What's alarming about this, however, is the increasing rate at which this is happening. As I said, we just had in the last week, we had two major cities where there were two major exercises. The one that happened just a couple of days ago in Houston, they are firing guns and attacking schools. Citizens are never notified. What is happening is we're seeing the militarization of the police and we're seeing the military used as police. That's a very frightening perspective. We've seen that before in our country's history. We've seen it in other countries. And in spite of what the people in St. Louis said that they put on the media, that is not something that reduces crime. What it does is it makes criminals out of both the military and the police. So we hope that there'll be uh, more people like that San Antonio police chief who have the integrity and the wisdom to stand against this. Well, that's it for tonight's news. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are watching this on YouTube and would like to help support our operation, please consider purchasing a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. You can share that with uh, other friends and family. At least 10 people at a time can be watching simultaneously the news, so you can pass that out to even more than 10 people. I'm David Knight. See you tomorrow.